Thank you for tuning into Stepping Stones of Faith. Stepping Stones of Faith is a ministry of Claytonville United Brethren Church. Our service times are as follows. Sunday morning Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning worship starts at 10.30 a.m. If you would like to join us for any of these services, our address is 106 Elizabeth Street, Claytonville, Illinois, 60926. We hope to see you this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, we'll go ahead and do the whole chapter today. Finish this up, and then next week we will begin in our walk through the Psalms. And we will go through that till the week of Advent. Does that sound like a plan? All right. Starting in verse 1 of chapter 13. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before... And, fore and foretell as if, were, as if I were present the second time. And being absent now, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the others that if I come again, I will not spare anyone. Since I seek proof of Christ speaking through me, who toward you is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. So also we are, we are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God serving you. Examine yourselves, saying whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do, not, do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified, I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do not do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what do that which is honorable, whether or not we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong when you are when we are weak you are strong and you are strong we wish even your we wish even your per perfection therefore i write these things being absent being absent lest being present i shall should be sharp according to the authority which the lord has given me for edification and not for destruction Finally, brothers, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So let's dissect this <clears throat> for a moment. We're going to just kind of look at the, the we're going to just kind of brief over this. Uh, verse 1 says, this is the third time I am coming to you. In the, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Uh, understand that back then, and even like today, in the court of law, you have to have, they call it witnesses. And so they have to get the story straight. They have to uh, get it to concur with one another. So he's saying in, in, the, in the mouths of two or three witnesses, uh, let every word be established. So let, let the, the word be established in us, in, in them, and in, in Paul. He goes on, he says, I told you before and foretell as if I were present the second time and being absent now, I write, to, write these to, to those who have sinned before and to all the others that if I come again, I will not spare anyone. Since you seek proof of Christ speaking through me, who toward you is not weak but is mighty in you. So he's speaking to everyone, but he's speaking to those that have sinned against God 
and are sinning against God, I am not going to spare you. I am going to set you straight or you'll have to go. That's basically what he's saying. Because what happens here when in any situation when there is a, someone has a um, bad attitude, how does that, how does that affect the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the whole situation? Is everybody joyful when someone has a bad attitude? Or when someone's angry, doesn't it kind of spill over into everybody else? Same here. It's going to, this bad theology, the, bad, the, the walking, uh, walking apart from God will spill over. So he has to deal with them. And God will deal with us. If we walk away from God and we are uh, someone with a bad, maybe they've had a bad day, you, know, you have a bad day, and you're kind of working through that, but you still have a bad attitude, I have that sometimes, and it kind of just spills over into all your situations. God said, or Paul, 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 Paul said, I'm not going to spare you. I'm not going to spare anyone. He goes on and he says, for though, for through, for through, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. So also we are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God serving you. So we are weak in our own mortal bodies, right? How many of us here have bad backs? <laughs> I know you have this time of year is really bad, right? Arthritis kicks in. But yet we have things we have to do, right? We still have to go to the mailbox. We still have to uh, go get groceries. We still have to minister to our families. And yet we still do it. Where does that strength come from? It comes from God, doesn't it? It doesn't come from all the strength we can muster but that strength comes from God. So we will have, we will live in him by the power of God serving you. So he, they're going to serve by the power of God. They're going to work by the power of God, regardless of how they feel. If they feel weak, if they feel down, they're going to serve by the power of God. Not by their own strength. And notice who's getting the glory in that. It's not those that are working. It is God. God is getting the glory in that. Amen? He's the one getting the glory in the workings that they're doing. Because he says, by the power of God serving you. They're going to work by the power of God serving them. And then he goes on. And he says, examine yourselves. Seeing whether you are in the faith Test yourselves. This is something we must do on a regular basis. We must examine ourselves, seeing whether you're in the faith. That means looking at everything in our lives, from the pulpit to the pew, we need to examine our motives. We need to examine our thoughts. We need to examine our actions to see if we're in the faith. Because as, as it says in the scripture, a little leaven Leavens the whole lump. So if you're dabbling or we're dabbling or someone's dabbling in a little bit of something, eventually that's going to turn into the whole thing. It's going to leaven the whole lump. So we must examine ourselves regularly. Regularly. God, am I living the way you want me to live? Show me if I'm not and help me to apply the things you want me to apply. Examine ourselves. Test ourselves. Put ourselves to the test. Now that doesn't mean, you know, put yourself in front of a sin and see how you react. That means test yourself. See that you are in the faith. It's like a school test, you know. You learned all these things, and they give you a weekly test, a math test. Did you learn everything? Let's see. Test yourself to see that you are of God. Do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? 
This is something we have to ask ourselves. Do we not realize that Christ is in us? Do we not realize that he is living within us? Do we not realize that? Do I not realize that? Do we not realize that Christ is living within us? He is. The moment we ask Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior, the Spirit dwells within us in that moment, and he lives within us in that moment. Do we not know that Christ lives within us? So that when we have these times of, well, I'm going to slip over here and I'm going to choose not to do what God wants me to do for this moment in time, Christ is grieved. The Holy Spirit is grieved in that. So we have to test ourselves, examine ourselves. We have to realize that Christ is living in us. He says, unless indeed you are disqualified. Unless indeed you are disqualified. You walk away from the faith. You walk away from the faith. I heard a good um, teaching this past week about whether someone can lose their salvation. And one of the things that they brought out was we have to look at how it's worded. Can you lose your salvation? Well, to lose something... Is, is to put forth that you've misplaced something, that, that you've put it somewhere you can't remember. Can we lose it? No, we cannot lose it. Can we choose to walk away from it? Absolutely. It's not lost then. We know where it is and we choose to walk away from it. We choose to walk away from it. So, disqualified would would indicate that we are saying that we have walked away from our faith. We have walked away from God. And we do that when we sin. We do that when we choose not to follow God. We walk away. But the reaction afterwards is key. Do we come back to God in those situations or do we continue to walk away from God? The farther you walk away, the colder you become. The farther you walk away, the colder you become. The less you hear. You ever walk, you ever walk in, a, in, a, in a crowd of people and you can, hear, you can hear the screams really, really, really loud when you're in the midst of them, but when you walk away two or three blocks, you can't hear them anymore. Same thing happens. When you're in the midst and presence of God, you can hear his voice. But the farther you walk away, the less you can hear his voice. When you walk away from the presence of God. And we must stay in that presence of God. We must stay in the, on, 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 under the spout where the glory comes out, as I was once told. We must stay under the spout where the glory comes out. Now, are we perfect? Are you perfect? Am I perfect? Is the human race perfect? No. There was only one perfect person. That was Jesus Christ, and he's now with the Father. No one is perfect but him. So we must examine. That's why we examine. That's why we test. That's why we search our hearts because we are not perfect. We are identifying the fact that we are not perfect. We need a Savior. We need Jesus Christ in our lives. We need him. He says in verse 6, I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do, what, do that which is honorable, whether or not we may seem disqualified. Do what's honorable no matter what. Do the right thing. Or you hear that all the time. Do the right thing. I'm a person who does the right thing. How many, how many people have heard that before? Whether you think someone is right with God or not right with God, do right by them. Why? Because through that, it might draw them to the place of Christ, whether they're disqualified or not. 
Do right by them. Do right by people. Do the honorable thing. Do what's right. You ever find money laying on somewhere and then you, do you keep it or do you turn it in? I'm not going to answer that, but that's the question. If you, if you find, let's say, 100 bucks on the ground, do you keep it or do you turn it in? That's the honorable, what is the honorable thing? What is the honorable thing in that? That's a question we all have to answer. And, and our answer would denote where we are. Amen? <clears throat> he says, verse 7, Now I pray to God that you do, do no evil, that not we should appear approved, but that we should, that you should do not, that, we, that you should do that which is honorable, whether or not we seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. If we are qualified, we should desire to do everything for the truth. We should desire to see God moving in people's lives, bringing forth the truth. If we are truly following God, then we must continue to follow God and do what is right. Are we, are, are, are we perfect in that? No. But that's still the call. Do what is right before God. Do what is right before God. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. We wish, even your, we wish even your perfection. Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present I should be sharp according to the authority which the Lord has given me for the edification and not for destruction. So he's saying I'm writing this letter to you to edify you, to encourage you, Examine yourselves. Do what's right. Test yourselves. See if you're in the faith. That's for edification, not for destruction. That's for God to be living within you for your edification, for your lifting up, not for your destruction. Jesus Christ is, is in it for our edification, for our edification and not our destruction. Finally, brothers, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good com comfort. Be of one mind and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Finally, be perfect. Live in peace. Be of good comfort and if we are following God, what do we have? If we're in the presence of God, what do we have? We have good comfort. We have the comfort of God. If we are believers, we're of one mind with Christ. And if we are with God, we will live in peace with one another and with those around us. And the God of love and peace will be with you. If we are following God, he will be with us. What's the Bible say? It says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. That, necessarily, that, that doesn't necessarily mean prayer time. If we are in one mind with Christ and we are together and we are, we are doing what we're supposed to do, Christ is with us. Christ is guiding us and directing us. If we are of one mind with Christ, we will live in peace. We will live in joy and comfort. But Christ has to be the center of our lives individually and collectively. What is the center? How do we know he's in the center? Well, what is the first thing we think about when tragedy hits? Where do we go? 
when tragedy hits? Where do we go when we, when we win that award? Who do we give glory to? When we get the raise or when we, whatever the case, rejoice, whatever reason, who gets the glory for that? Should be God. When we are struggling, where do we go? Should be God. He says, greet one another with a holy kiss. Now, I'm not going to go around kissing everybody, okay? Just, just so you know, I'm not going to go around kissing y'all. All right? Greet one another with a holy kiss. All, all the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the, commun and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. These are things that he's wishing on them. He's blessing them. You know, like Abraham, or I mean, um, Isaac, and all, they got blessings. That was the blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's the blessing. That's what we do every single day, every, every single Sunday at the end. The, 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 the Aaronic blessing. May he bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Give you his peace. Those, that is a blessing because that's what we would like for everyone to have. So there are some things we should be doing. We should be, first and foremost, examining ourselves making sure we are in the faith. How do we do that? What are the, some things we can do? Well, we can examine how often we read our Bible. Now that's, you say, well, we can't just, you know, I read my Bible every day. That, that doesn't make me necessarily right with God. And I would agree with you on that. It depends upon how you effectively do that. Your attitude behind that reading of the scripture? Do you approach the scripture looking for God to move in your life? Or do you read the scripture because it's something that you do, it's a routine, it's nothing really more than that? Examine yourself to see why you do the things that you do. Do you pray? Why do you pray? What, what is your motivation for praying? Is it to hear from God or is it because it's something you have to do? That's something we must examine, every single one of us. Why do we pray? We pray to get, because we say, well, I pray to ask God for this and this and this. That's, that's fine, that's great, that's dandy, but what about him? Prayer is a two-way conversation. We praise God, we ask God to bless us, we, we talk to God, we, we, we give our praises, and then we sit, so we sit quietly before God and we allow God to minister and speak to us. That's an important part of it. That's where we get the application, or the instructions for the application. So that's how, one of, two of the ways you can check. Another of the ways is in that time when God says, start, stop, or change something, how do we feel about that? Do we feel that we can? Do we feel that we should? Do we feel that we can't because we're not equipped? We read a story this morning in Sunday school about Gideon. Remember the story of Gideon? He didn't feel equipped, but yet God told him to do something. And it took some doing. It took some testing God, but he came to the position of being very bold in God and doing what God wanted him to do. When God tells us to do something, are we reluctant? Do we feel we can't? We're unable. God equips those who he calls. Remember that. If God calls you to forgive, he's going to give you the, the capacity to forgive. If God calls you to start something, a ministry of some sort, or maybe just something he wants you to do, God will equip you to do that. He will equip you. Now, what are some other things? 
Why do we come to church? What's the reasoning for that? We've covered prayer and we've covered application, covered reading the Bible. Why do we come here? Why do people go to church across the whole nation? Why do people walk, why do people go to church? Could be any number of reasons. Tradition, obligation, and it could also be to spend time with God and God's people. That's the attitude we must have. Why do we go to church? We go to church because God is there and I want to be with him and his people. Like-mindedness. God is with his people when there's two or three are gathered together, whether it's in prayer time or church time or dinner time. God is with us. Why do we go to church? Why do we come to this building? Why do I come to this building? Why do you come to this building? Is it to hear God? To hear what he has to say? Or is it because it's a tradition? It's what we have to do. When I was younger, we lived close enough to the church we could walk to church. So we could say, well, it's because it's the closest church we could walk to church. Is that the reason? Or is it because you want to hear God? Is it obligation? Well, my whole family goes there. In my case, the church I grew up in, everyone went there from years. I mean, great-grandfather all the way up to me. So that was obligation. So is it obligation to a family tradition? Or is it to hear God, to know what God has, and to spend time with God's people? Why do we go to church? Why do we go to church? Is it because we want to look like we have good morals? Or is it to hear God? Are we concerned about what other people think? Or are we concerned about what God thinks? These are things we must examine. Why we pray. Why we go to church. Why we do the things we do. These are things we must examine. So we must examine ourselves to see that we are of the faith. And are we disqualified? Or are we not disqualified? If we're going down a road of choosing to turn away from God continually, we will eventually be disqualified. We will eventually be disqualified. But if we come back to God after we choose not to follow God, we are in safety. Because we all sin. We're human nature. We all sin. But we must understand that we must come to God in those times. Why do we walk away? Why does a person walk away? Could be any number of things. Could be a bad relationship with the father. A lot of people that have bad relationships with their fathers view God as a bad father. It could be they were hurt in the church, so they walk away. It could be because maybe somebody that they trusted turned away from God, so they don't see the point. Why do people walk away? Why is it important to follow? It's important to follow because when we do follow, we'll be with Christ in the end. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the saints be with you all. That was the ending of this book. That's what God wants us to know. That when we follow God, when we walk with God, when we do the things God wants us to do, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with us. That means we have the arsenal to be able to handle life. Life is hard. You know that? We all know that. Say amen if you don't. But we do know that, right? Life is hard. We have things we deal with on a daily basis. Financial problems. Family problems. Health problems. 
Car problems, house problems. We have problems, but it's all manageable when we follow Christ. All of it. Every answer you'll ever need is in this book. And Christ is the only thing, the only person who can help. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you all. If we follow, if we walk with him, if we come before God and pray, if we have our, our understanding of our, um, why we do things in the proper perspective, if we're, doing, if we're following God for status, for tradition, or for anything else, then we are lacking in this situation. We're to follow God because we want to know God. The more we want to know God, the more we'll want to know God. At least that's the way it should be. Amen? We want to know Him. We want to walk with Him. We want to desire Him. He desires us. He died for us. Do we desire to know him? Do we desire to know him? So that's our challenge this week. Examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Look at things, why you do things that you do. Why do you pray? Why do you come to church? Why do you read your Bible? Why do you do those things? And allow God to minister. And allow God to apply those and, 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 and allow God to apply those things to your life that you'd be better tomorrow than you are today. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you today for your grace and your mercy. I pray, Father, that you'd touch us and minister to us. Help us, Father, to examine ourselves to know that we stand in you. Lord, and where we fall short, Father, I pray that you would help us to get back with you. And Lord, minister to us and minister through us today. And Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to Stepping Stones of Faith. I pray that you find value in this content. You can also find an audio podcast of this program on all the major podcasting platforms. Just type Stepping Stones of Faith into the podcast search bar. Once again, I'm Pastor Josh. Thank you for joining me today.